Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to create this nice, vibrant, abstract volume effect in Blender. This is completely procedural, so we'll be having some fun with nodes today. Ducky3D actually made a similar tutorial to this, so that's linked down in the description for you to check out. But we'll be changing a few things, mainly the color and the design. Before we start, I would like to mention that I do have an Instagram, so if you create something cool with these tutorials, please tag me. Instagram is linked down below. Anyways, let's get into the video. Okay, so we have a default scene. First thing we're going to want to do is delete everything except for the cube. Next, we're going to set up our render settings. So let's go to our render tab. And I'm going to switch to cycles uh, render for this. Uh, for you EV users, you're going to want to go to the volumetrics tab and change the tile size all the way down to 2px. Um, you can change it higher or lower depending on what your computer strength is. If your computer is lagging, then you might want to change it to 4px. But for finally, you're going to want it the highest resolution. The lower this number is, the higher the resolution. So anyways, let's go to cycles. And for your rendering device, uh, if you have one, use the GPU. It'll make it loads faster. OK, so next thing we're going to do is set up camera. Let's go to front view and hit control alt zero to snap the camera to view. So I'll just bring it until you think it looks good. Next thing we're going to do is create that cool um, abstract uh, gas effect. So let's name this material nebula. That's good. And let's go to the shading tab. OK, so right now we're in uh, look dev, our material preview, which is OK for some things. But for volume, this is essentially the EV engine. So we're going to want to go to our render view. Now, first, uh, another thing you want to do is change the world color all the way down to black. So by default, the material comes with a principal BSDF. We're going to delete that. And instead, we're going to add a shader principled volume. Now, plug this into, the, uh, you have the material output node, plug this into the volume. It's very important that it goes into the volume, not the surface output. So next thing we're going to add is a texture, Veronai texture. And then we're going to plug the distance, uh, the distance output value into the emission strength. So now you can see uh, something's happened. It looks all fuzzy and not very good. So let's add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. You can add these by hand, um, or you can add these by enabling the node wrangler add-on and um, hitting Control T. OK, so this still hasn't changed at all. So next thing we're going to do is grab a Musgrave texture and plug that in between the Verona texture and the mapping node. So it's still, uh, something's changed, but it's not very pronounced. So let's add a converter color ramp and put it in between the emission strength and the brown texture. Now, if we just bring this together, you can see, uh, the, if we drag in the black value, the crunch values, you can see that we have this uh, weird jellyish um, effect. It looks almost like uh, smoke, but weirder. <laughs> um, so yeah, it doesn't look anything like the finished result. So let's uh, grab um, a color mix RGB node, and let's drop that in between the texture coordinate and the mapping node. Next thing we're going to do is use, um, is grab a noise texture, and drop this, uh, the, fact, uh, the color of this into the mix node. So now you can see it looks pretty interesting uh, right now, but it doesn't have that detailed look, so the next thing we're going to do is duplicate this and also duplicate the noise texture and plug the color into the output again. And nothing's changed, that's because these are exactly the same, so let's bring the scale up to something like 20 and detail up to something like 10. Maybe bring that down to 10. I'll go with 15. So now you can play around with these values. Uh, depending on what your value is, it'll change the look of this. So next thing's next, um, this looks pretty good, but it's uh, monotone, it's all one color, black and white, doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do is grab a noise texture, and we're going to plug this into the color of the noise texture into the emission color. Very important you do this into the emission color. If you do this into the normal color uh, value, it, will, it won't affect it since we're using emission string. Okay, so you can see something that's happened, but not very much. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a color hue saturation node. And now just take the saturation and put in a high value like 20. So that looks OK. It's a little dark, 
So what we're going to do to brighten it up is go to color and use a brightness contrast node. So now I drop that in between the uh, color ramp and the emission strength. And now I take the brightness up to something like 50 and now you can see it's all blown up. Looks pretty bad. Uh, to equalize that, we're going to bring the contrast up to something like 250. So now you can see we have this uh, nice colorful effect. It doesn't look too bad. What I might do is um, I might play around with these factors a little bit. Maybe bring this one up, bring it down. It doesn't look too bad. Another thing you're going to want to do to make it look a little bit better is use object, um, object coordinates instead of generated coordinates. That looks pretty good, um, pretty vibrant. Now you can go around, um, you can do some compositing, you can add depth of field. But yeah, that's it. As usual, you can download the blend file for free from the link in the description. Anyways, that does it for me. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.